Welcome back, everyone. Again, Kyle Flaherty, Greg Matthews, Jimmy Stewart, Kristen Owen. We are talking about do 512. And this is the second half, so we're going to get you know, a little looser, more fun, <laughs> talking about music. It was, really on a it was uptight. uptight. Well, yeah. you know, <laughs> if you didn't see the first episode, I had a full three-piece suit on. Um, I actually wanted to ask, and I'll, Kristen, I'll start with you, because I, you're local I'm to probably, Austin. Yes. All right. First kind of music memory about Austin that kind of pops in your head. Um, for sure it involves emos. This is definitely not my first memory, but it's my favorite story to tell. I think um, we actually wrote a blog post when we found out they were closing, and, and Frank caught wind of it and sent me a message telling me it was his favorite Frank story he'd heard. Emos. Sorry, yeah. When I was 20, I had this big first date. I mean, my first memories were being like 15 of emos, watching punk bands and trying to be cool and, you know... <laughs> wipe my exes off so that I could drink free beer. <laughs> but, and so when I was 28, I had the first date with this guy in college. I was super excited. We were going to see International Noise Conspiracy at Emo's. And, you know, I wanted to be cool, so I wiped my stamps off immediately. And uh, within about five minutes, I had three giant guys at Emo's lift me off the ground and carry me out back <laughs> and open the gates. And uh, so I, I tried to call up the guy I was on a date with, and he didn't answer, and he texted me that that sucks. And <laughs> I got to get a cab ride Stay home, and then I like dated him. <laughs> yeah, you know, barely That's 21. Right, exactly. Somebody, yeah. Yeah. Like, this is, yeah. So you never got to see them play? No, I didn't, but actually the original band refused us getting back together and playing Coachella this year, so I'm taking a vacation. Oh, there you That's, go. Yeah, you can invite that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Just kidding. <laughs> you submitted your vacation request date? Totally, yeah. <laughs> to HR. All right, the pressure's on. She's HR, yeah. Pressure's on. Let's, let's hear it. Man, okay, so I'm a, I guess you could say a different generation uh, from Chris. I, I, I grew up, I was born in Austin, we grew up in Dallas mostly, and I used to come down here. Uh, when I was in high school, my brother went to UT, and I'd go visit him, and we would go, like, you know, I had, like, the, the worst fake ID of all times, and we would go bounce around in these little, uh, you know, uh, blues clubs on, on, on 6th Street and watch Vinny's play. This is Far before Red River was a thing. You like know? Steamboat and stuff Far like before that. the stu Stubbs was a thing. I mean, I'm 67 years old. So. <laughs> you look um, fantastic. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. So, um, no, but, uh, uh, you know, certainly, you know, back, it's, it's all sort of somewhat fuzzy, but back since, ever since Stubbs has been around, I mean, this has been kind of a home base venue for me. I mean, I mean so many fantastic shows over the year, and just as, as, as good as it gets for sound and talent, and, you know, it's just. Uh, this is definitely kind of, this and yeah. Emo's would be sort of my core kind of venues that I've spent most of my time at, and it's just, it's everything ranging from, like, seeing Robert O'Keen or, like, you know, Rose of Motley or Built to Spill for the first time. Um, Portugal the Man was one of my favorite shows, one of my favorite bands ever, who, interestingly enough, we, um, they, Portugal the Man is, you know, now it's become a, a pretty big band and doing all these festivals in the early days of, uh, when they, when I first saw them, it was at Emo's, and there was about 20 people in the room. We had just started 2512 at that time, and uh, I'm like, wow, this band is fantastic. And Kristen was living in New York. This is before she was there. I texted her, go check out this band. She wrote a blog post and all this stuff. Well, I called up the manager. I was so moved by the music. I called up the manager, and I told him, you know, this band's great. I have this little website we started here. We'd love to kind of help promote it. And we have really aggressively helped promote the band and they went from playing that little emos you know the emos uh the the, the side of the indoor room to here inside to, uh, to doing uh, two back-to-back -back parish dates i believe they played our one of our big parties during south by and most recently sold out you know stubs outdoors and and and, and, and a cool little thing is we've become close friends with those guys and they actually invited chris and me out to dinner and like took us out basically to thank us because they said that they owe their you know, reputation and their growth in Austin over the last couple of years to the, what we've been able to do. And that's like, that's the most rewarding thing ever, to be able to have a direct impact on like band success, new fans, and, 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 and being involved in that. And that's one of our cool little stories. I had to throw that in there. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't that's blame cool. you. That's very cool. And honestly, I know Do 512 has morphed into some other things. Do stuff has begun to go national. Mm -hmm. But I know your focus is still very much here in Austin. How, how important is that localness, that ability to connect with local artists, with local events? How important is that to you uh, both? I mean, it's, it's hugely important. I think it's at the core of what we do is that, is that we're so incredibly local and focused. I mean, not just on local bands. I mean, we love the local bands and we support them as well. But just having that kind of like local feel and just being really in touch with, with stuff on a, on a very small local level 
instead of just focusing on the big events and the big shows. So mm -hmm. I think that's why we, we succeed where others fail, because we value that and, and nurture it. And you know, we've seen so many similar sort of event type companies, you know, startups come and go, and people that launch really quickly, dump a bunch of money in, turn on a bunch of cities and expect them to sort of pick up traction. But, you know, for us, we never we never raised a penny. We, we, we did this all. We've grown on profit and revenue alone. We started with nothing. I mean, in the early days, we would have, you know, we would get on the phone and call every local blogger and have these backyard barbecues and buy a case of beer and cook, like, you know, barbecue in the backyard and have these people over and try to get them to like us and, like, care about what we had to say and, and, and those partnerships, and, 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 and the, the number one thing for us is growing, in growing Do 512 has been hosting events, having good parties, like real parties where we're there. And, the, you know, we, in the beginning, I remember we did our launch party. I was like, oh, my God, we have 245 <laughs> RSVPs, you know. Like, this is mind-blowing, the traffic. We're going to hit, you know, 300 visits today. You know, and it's just like, and then now, you know, we do we do parties and we have thirty thousand RSVPs and you know who are you know and it's just it, it's it's been uh, doing events and having a real presence locally is everything and it's why you know you know these you know, a lot of big companies and Silicon Valley start up and they want to launch fifty cities simultaneously and believe that you can just sort of turn it on and they'll come but it's not the case you, you, being directly you know having a, your, your roots like real people that you know, real relationships and having, you know, is, you know, has been everything for us. Well, and that's at the core. I mean, you mentioned barbecue. We're all drinking beer, yeah. music. I mean, that stuff's at the core. And we were talking to one of the founders of Stubbs a few weeks ago in one of the episodes, and he talked about how when they first started, they went out in the, you know, old bus, and they, like, just served their barbecue out of the back of the bus to get people excited about it and all that stuff. But as you scale as a business... How do you keep that touch? How do you keep the, you know, that core values that you guys obviously are passionate about, but you also want to grow? Well, with the big model for us right now for Do Stuff for the Growth, we now have 10 other city sites. We actually launched San Francisco today, which we're very Congratulations. proud about. We have uh, uh, Chicago, which is uh, a C3 partnership, and, uh, and, and all these other cities. But you know, the key is, for us, the model right now is a franchise model. It's seeking out entrepreneurs looking to do this kind of thing in their city. They're deeply connected. They're yeah. event promoters. They're former, you know, radio sales reps. They're people who have been in the world of events, music, entertainment. Festival they're, they're, they're deeply connected. Yeah, and right now, a big part of it is, as we've, you know, as, as we've grown, has been, has been, uh, you know, people who already have festivals, have big email lists, have, mm -hmm. have some media already, you know, to, uh, to, to sort of, Back up their, their their thing or other media properties, and um, but it's it's definitely it's 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 everything. I mean, being able to have real people who are deeply connected in that community is the you know the make it or break it for, for this, and and the gumption and the drive and the connections to really kind of make a business out of it because you know you can give them sort of the platform all day, and if it just sits there, and if you don't have a plan and goals yeah. and you know, and, and milestones, then it, it, it's just not going to work. It, it just, people don't magically show up and start using your stuff unless you're out there really working it, unless you have a better product than everybody else, sure. a better user experience, and you have uh, you have somebody who's able to, you know, to sort of activate it and make it happen. So if we could get philosophical for a second. Uh, clearly, you guys have been working in the Austin music scene for a while, uh, and... A lot, if you ask 10 people on the street, they'll probably have 10 different ideas about what the Austin music scene is about. But what are some of the trends that you see in terms of Austin music? We've seen blues flavor. We've seen country flavor. What's, what's next for Austin music? You know, it's a weird time for Austin music. I'm hesitant to really try to like nail down a trend. But you know, we're seeing a lot of really important historical venues shutting down pretty quickly. You know, we've lost Emo's. Beauty Bar's opening now on the east side. Momo's, Red Seven, and, and, and yeah, they did too, but the, the Red River District, as we know, it is certainly, it's gone, you know, and, and the East Side's blowing up, and now Red River, and it's hard to say what the next musical trend will be, you know, it's been this electronic hipster for a while, and I'm hoping that changes soon, um, <laughs> but, To state a personal know. preference. <laughs> um, I love that all No opinions, now. I'm ready for some more hard rock to come back. There you go. Yeah, I would say, you know, what's great about Austin, it's always been really, really diverse. And, like, now some of the, the, these cool hot bands are, like, sort of, like, like you know, Crooks and, and, and uh, 
whiskey sugar, some of these sort of Americana rootsy acts are sort of starting to Very. kind of emerge in the midst of this electronica uber hipster, you know, <laughs> music and, and... Not that we're biased. Not yes. that we're biased which is I'm getting a vibe here. <laughs> yeah. just... No, but, uh, but you know, uh, it, it's just that, that there's so much room. There's, there's so many places for people to play. There's so much opportunity for people to build their own audience. You can be as crazy out there and diverse as you want. You can be as sort of rootsy Americana. I mean, I, you know, uh, we see it ever, you know, it's, it's an ever-evolving machine, and I think Austin's very um, sort of symbolic of what's happening. Not only, you know, it's not just here, it's happening everywhere. I mean, you know, these trends are, are, are constantly evolving and changing. Like, this year, sorting through all of our various South by, you know, bands coming to town, we see this massive, you know, chunk of sort of this, along this electronica mm -hmm. vein. But at the same time, some of the, you know, there's bands like Alabama Shakes that are totally like soulful, rootsy bands that are making, getting some of the biggest buzz. So, you know, there's, there's just with, with, in a town where, you know, over a thousand bands a week play, there's so much room for so many different styles of taste. And, yep. and, and, uh, and, uh, and that's what's really cool about Austin is it's, it's always been that kind of melting pot and there's always... You know, there's always uh, trends coming in and out, but ultimately, you know, good music and good bands prevail and, and, and will do well and be successful. And I couldn't have said that better myself. And so we're going to wrap it up now on behalf of Greg, uh, Kristen, Jimmy, thank you so much for joining us. Do 512. And thank you for watching.